Hello, in this presentation, we will record an advanced payment from customer within QuickBooks Pro 2018. We will continue working with the Get Great Guitars problem. If you've been working along with us and you have the backup, you can restore that backup by going to File and Restore. If not, that's okay. We will be recording an advanced payment, meaning we're going to receive payment from a customer for work or goods that have not yet been delivered could be thought of as a deposit. We're getting the money before the work has been done. In this case, the work being the delivery of a guitar. If you have the home page open, that's what we're going to be starting out with. If not, we go to the company and the home page. Also going to have the open windows open. We can get there by going to the view tab and open window list. We currently only have the home page open. The scenario here is going to be that we sell guitars and we are going to receive an advance payment from a customer. We can think of it as a deposit. So if we had to order the guitar custom for a customer, we may require an advance payment on it. And therefore, we're going to actually get the payment, receive the payment here before we create the invoice. And what are we going to do when that happens? Clearly, we're going to, we're going to debit some kind of cash account, in this case, undeposited funds. But we can't credit revenue in this case. We haven't yet sold the guitar. We want to connect these two things. But normally we can see the process going from create invoice to receiving payment. And in this case, we are going to receive the payment, get the deposit before we create uh, the invoice. So once we create the invoice, then after the point that we receive payment, we'll be able to tie those credit amounts out. We'll also take a look at what happens in terms of the financial statements, which accounts will be affected, and what's going to happen to the AG account, or how is that um, receivable or going to be put in place in terms of a negative receivable in this case, or something that we typically owe in terms of a liability. When we record this in terms of um, normal accounting, uh, generally accounting principles, we would say debit the or increase the uh, deposit, the cash. And then we would credit not revenue, but undeposited funds. We're actually going to work it a little bit differently because of the format of QuickBooks and because it helps us with some of the reports. And we'll talk a bit about that. So we're going to say receive payments. And we're going to have our guitar, our uh, customer is going to be Anderson. So we could select the drop down or we could just type in Anderson and start to type in that. And we're going to say the payment is going to be for 250 that we are receiving the date is going to be 021621 we are working in the future we will keep it as a check we're going to say the check number an optional field that we're getting a check from the customer this is not a check that we are writing 5243 and that's going to be it for the customer payment. Note that when we record this, we're going to have the 250, but it's not going to be deposited into our checking account. It's going to go into the undeposited funds. Normally, the credit would be decreasing the accounts receivable for an invoice that we have outstanding here. Now, we're still going to be dealing with accounts receivable because that's basically what the customer payment function does. But since we don't have anything to apply it to, because we have not yet created the invoice, because we have not yet delivered the guitar, what's going to happen is it's going to create a negative receivable. So when we go in and take a look at the receivable for this customer, Anderson, we'll actually have a negative receivable. That's not exactly proper uh, in terms of accrual accounting because we should have a liability, not a negative asset, not a negative receivable. However, it does work well for us to connect this deposit, this prepayment, to the future thing that's going to happen when we actually make the invoice at the point in time that we deliver the goods, in this case, the guitar. So we're going to say save and close and see what that looks like. It says a credit for the overpayment will remain with the customer. We're going to say OK, and we're going to apply that credit to the customer when we create the invoice. So then we're going to go to the reports and see what happened. We're going to go to company and financial, scrolling down to the balance sheet. We're going to change the date range so that we can see uh, the drill down on the date range. And we're going to say it's 01012121213121. There's the date range. Okay. So we have the date range there. Now, 
We know the receive payment did not go into the checking account. It went into the undeposited funds. So if we double click on the undeposited funds and scroll down, we see that uh, we have the Anderson guitars, the 250. If we double click on that, there is our customer payment. If we close that back out, close in this back out, the other side of it is going to be in receivable, even though nothing was due at the time. If we double click on the receivable, and we scroll down, we see the 250. Now that looks normal until we see the fact that there's no related invoice to this payment, as there typically would be. For example, we see this 430 and then this 430 going out, and we see the 399, and I don't see the 399 going out, but we, <laughs> we see the 525 and we see the 525. That's gonna be the normal process for the receivable. Uh, in this case, we've got something, a payment, but no invoice, which typically would be input before the payment. So let's take a look at what that looks like on uh, the accounts receivable detail. And note here, however, that this amount should then be reported as a liability, which will make more sense when we look at the detail. So we're gonna go to the reports. We're gonna scroll down to customer receivables, and we want to go to the customer balance detail. And if we look at Anderson, we see that we have this 250. Again, it's a negative number. And that means it's a negative receivable. That shouldn't be uh, because a receivable means people owe us money. A negative receivable from this customer means we owe them money, which means that it's a liability, not an asset. So this is not something that would be under generally accepted accounting principles, meaning if we look at our total balance sheet number, which added up to 965, it should be higher by 250 and we should have a liability of 250. However, this system works really well for us to be able to track everything by customer and then uh, apply the invoice out to this amount in the future as we will do. So in essence, we're gonna do this in practice so that we can make that connection so we can have software uh, of QuickBooks make that connection. However, when we do the adjusting entries at the end of the day, when we're trying to make our financial statements in accordance with GAAP, then uh, for, for uh, financial reporting, then we're basically gonna do an adjusting entry to take these negative amounts out and create a liability for them.